Thank you, thank you, Nina, and thank you, Dato Shahira, for that very warm welcome. So, Hennis, I hear that our next speaker is an iconic Malaysian. Who is she? Well, yes, she is indeed. Based in Nairobi, she's considered by many as a superstar in Kenya in her work at the UN. In 2017, she became the first Asian woman to be appointed as Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, or UN Habitat. Back here at home, her many legacies include the urban renewal project of Georgetown in Penang Island. Today, Georgetown has been designated by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Now, at the heart of her work, she champions inclusivity for cities, especially for marginalised communities such as women and youth. A mother to two daughters, Ms. Sharif is also committed to achieving gender parity at UN Habitat. In fact, she's currently one of the five gender champions based in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. Now, ladies and gents, while she's unable to join us physically at the conference, in the next 12 minutes, she'll be delivering her keynote address virtually titled The Changing Face of Philanthropy. Speaking from Nairobi, Kenya, please welcome Executive Director of UN Habitat and the Secretary General of the United Nations, Dato Sri Paduka Maimuna Muhammad Sharif. Rahman Rahim, Excellencies, Honorable Mayors, Distinguished Guests, Colleagues, Friends, Ladies and Gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dari Nairobi. Selamat pagi juga di Malaysia. Please allow me to start by congratulating Yayasan Hasana and Kazanah National Berhad for organizing this Hasana Forum in conjunction with the ASEAN Venture Philanthropy Network AVPN Conference. I am very pleased to deliver this keynote speech on the theme of fostering justice-based philanthropy, which focuses on one, transformational collaboration, two, ASEAN leadership, three, empowered communities, and four, urgent action. We are indeed very fortunate, as His Excellency Datuk Sri Anwar bin Ibrahim, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, will be offering his insights and experience at the conclusion of this event. I am also told that the Honorable Muhammad Rafizi bin Ramli, Minister of Economy Malaysia, will be joining the forum tomorrow, and the Honorable Hana Yeo, Minister of Youth and Sport Malaysia, the following day. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked to speak on the topic of courageous leadership. This is no doubt that positive impact is a direct result of good leadership. Having traveled to many regions of the world and having dealt with many local government leaders and stakeholders, those that seem to have made the greatest positive impact are often led by extraordinary leaders. One common characteristic that these leaders share is a solid belief in the cause that they are championing. When I think about such conviction, I'm reminded of my father, who was a humble rubber tapper and religious instructor in a small village in Negeri Sembilan. He was a respected figure, despite being cash poor. When I was starting my career, as a junior civil servant, he reminded me that I must never lose sight of my responsibility. The responsibility to the people I serve and the responsibility to myself to always serve with integrity. If you know what is right, you will have the courage to speak truth to power, he used to say to me. Indeed, we become courageous when we have clarity of purpose. Only then, can we understand where we want to bring our theme? Because nothing motivates people like a leader who describes her vision clearly. Once we have established our priorities, we must translate it into policy, which in turn must be made into action. Perhaps because I'm by profession a town planner, I have always been guided by the big picture. As I was also a mayor, I have always focused on local action to bring about positive impact on the ground. 
that's what how I started the UN Habitat. I started by asking my team to develop action plans accompanied by budget. If it cannot be quantified, it cannot be measured. If it cannot be measured, we cannot deliver the positive impact we want on the ground. Distinguished delegates, UN Habitat's mandate is to help member states translate sustainable urbanization into a transformative force for good. As the Secretary General said to me, the experience here in Malaysia is a global example of how social and economic justice can be achieved through sustainable urbanization. He was referring to our housing policy and what has been achieved in the last 50 years. Although there are good examples like Malaysia or Singapore, the rest of the world is not doing as well. As the custodian of Sustainable Development Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, UN Habitat is preparing the report on the achievement of SDG 11. In many parts of the world, we are sliding back owing to the wars, natural disasters, and climate emergency. According to a report by PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC, 78 trillion US dollars will be required to close the infrastructure gap, especially in the developing world. Because we are failing to address this infrastructure deficit, some 2 billion urban dwellers are expected to be living in informal settlements, and 25% of the world's population will be living in slums by 2030. Globally, the estimated cumulative welfare losses attributed to exposure to ambient and household air pollution is more than 5.1 trillion US dollars. This is where we need courageous leaders and political will to flip the script on urbanization. At the second United Nations Habitat Assembly last week, diverse voices of self-organized stakeholders made evidence the rebuilding of trust in inclusive multilateralism must be anchored in human rights for all. Recognizing the importance of broad representation of all spheres, it also underscored that women's rights, gender equality, and women's empowerment should be at the center. As I said, women must be at the table, otherwise we become the menu. We also need to encourage gender responsive urban planning as women face restricted access to land and affordable housing. Women also face increased burden due to lack of basic services, limited mobility and participation in the economy. Through the women-led cities window of our flagship SDG cities program, we aim to work with 1,000 cities to improve life of 1 billion people. We are doing this by bringing women leaders and women-led businesses together to foster the development and growth of women businesses. I deliberately focus on women and gender equality because we cannot achieve the SDGs without supporting women and families. It is to me the bedrock of justice-based philanthropy. By empowering women, we are also empowering communities. I believe the themes of the dual events of Hasanah Forum can only be effective when all local actors work together to give voice to the marginalized, vulnerable, and hidden parts of society. You will be able to do so when you prioritize women, girls, youth, and families. At the same time, we also know that there is adequate financial resources to help narrow the gap. Indeed, the aggregate value of Islamic finance was calculated to be 2.6 trillion US dollar at the end of 2018. This is based on 151 public-private partnership PPP-related infrastructure projects with a total value of 185 billion US dollar. These are either planned or underway in the Middle East and Africa. Premised on asset-oriented system of ethical financial intermediation, Islamic bonds or sukuk 
is built on the principle of risk sharing. I'm convinced that we need to mainstream such instruments to provide infrastructure financing. Increasingly in philanthropy, we are seeing new forms of project financing evolving to meet the ever-growing needs of urban poor communities. Being spurred by enhanced connectivity, such as through mobile phone and online platform, we see how communities are relaying to solve basic service challenges. The first ingredient in flipping the script is to acknowledge and value the creativity, innovation, and resilience of the people we serve. It is very humbling for me to see the children of Yamok Park in Mosul, some named by landmines, whilst others often by war, come together to co-create the largest public space in their city. This forum can help by providing strategic support to local infrastructure projects. You can contribute to the co a community infrastructure fund to create jobs, assist communities, attract co-investment, and help build local capacity to enhancing community resilience. You need to do this in places that are experiencing stagnant growth or economic decline. It is counterintuitive to invest in such spaces, but the young shoots of urban regeneration cannot survive without philanthropic angel investors. While long since utilized as a means to generate economic benefits in compact community settings and rural community, community equity investment and cooperatives operate by providing a facilities for local community members to invest in a revolving fund, which then contribute back to the economy in the form of collectively owned businesses and utilities. UN Habitat also works with our wallet philanthropy to build houses in Yemen, as well as provide small grants to catalyze small businesses. A cornerstone of many of these forms of community-based financing are those ideals of justice and fairness, along with a desire for global connectedness and to give back. During my lifetime, I have borne witness to a growing sense of shared prosperity in Asia. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the courageous leaders who are here at this Hasanah Forum. Through merit making, risk sharing, and pooling financing, you have empowered entire communities. It is my hope that you will join UN Habitat in our mission to ensure a better quality of life for all in an urbanizing world. It takes political will to flip the script. It takes courage to lead transformative change. I believe that I'm speaking to courageous leaders who will take Malaysia and humanity into a new century defined by equality, justice, and peace. Thank you. Terima kasih.